Williamson, and uh, welcome to the second lesson of the Total Percussion Blog. Um, sorry I haven't put up anything as of lately. It's been a while since we've had a lesson, and uh, I've been totally swamped with some composition studies here at SIU Edwardsville. And uh, the good thing is, the music was finished as of yesterday. Parts went out today, so that's super exciting. Um, on track to graduate in December um, when, uh, with a degree in music performance and music composition. And uh, then it's off to grad school uh, the following fall. So that's exciting. Um, I'm going to hopefully have a good chance uh, to put some good stuff together. And today we're going to take a little bit of a different approach. Um, I'm not going to talk about anything traditional. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about two instruments that are relatively new to me. Um, the first one is the Klong Ya, and the second, the Bombo Liguero. Um, just to pick up on, on where I came into these instruments, uh, a good friend of mine, his name is Ricardo, and he put together this tango bossa nova group, um, which involves a cellist, a violist, a bassist, upright bass, um, him playing a squeeze box, or bandoneon, um, a form of accordion, Argentinian instrument, and then me playing percussion. And so these are his instruments, and uh, he's, he's let me borrow them for a while to sort of brush up on some techniques um, and work on some things. We actually have a gig on Sunday, and I wanted to talk about some stuff, um, about rehearsal, about technique, um, and just a little bit of background about each instrument, um, because they were totally new to me. I'm also going to be playing some Pandero stuff, uh, which, is, which is leaving his area. He's actually from Argentina. And this is an original music um, with him singing and also playing Badonion, which is a really cool instrument. If you don't know anything about it, check it out sometime. I might be able to uh, incorporate that either in this lesson or in another lesson, maybe take some video um, from the gig, and that way you guys will uh, be able to see what's going on. It's a really fun group. It's a beautiful sound. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's one of my favorite things going on that I like to listen to. Um, out of anything, that's the one thing that I really want to listen to right now. I'm kind of on that bandoneon kick. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to talk about a little bit of background. Um, the first instrument, I'm going to show it to you here, back away from the camera a little bit. Um, it looks like a squeezed out skinny djembe. Um, this is called a klongnya. And it, it's typically a, a, it was originally a Buddhist instrument. Um, it's shaped like a bell. And uh, it's very djembe-like. It looks exactly, sounds like a djembe as well. Um, we'll do some playing here in a little bit. It's a completely rope tension drum um, with a mm, fiber skin head on it. Looks like we're rocking a fiber skin three. Um, something similar to that. And uh, it's got a really beautiful sound. Um, I've seen it played like sitting on it, like straddling it through your knees. Um, but for ease and, and the way that I'm going to play it, I'm going to play it just like a djembe. It fits perfectly with my height, then that's how I'm going to deal it. It feels very small in the hands. Um, you, I barely have an, enough room for, for my skinny fingers um, to get all of my fingers on there. Um, and it's the same technique um, to produce the exact sounds that a djembe would, only quite higher in pitch. Um, so, so that's cool. We will talk about that more here in a minute. So that is the klongya. And then the second instrument we're going to spend some time talking about <clears throat> is a bombo liguero. Uh, this instrument is based in Argentina, and it's completely rope tensioned, um, and it usually comes from either a solid log, um, or this back one is actually wood that has been segmented, similar to how a conga is made. Um, and we have little leather ears here we can pull down and make the pitch go higher. Um, as of lately for this gig, um, and playing with this group, I've been rocking it all the way up um, just to get this low sound. Now, the head is very interesting. It's a furry head. Um, it can either be goat, sheep, um, some sort of calf skin. Um, I, I believe this is a goat skin. It's a very coarse fur. You can actually peel the fur off, which is actually really funny. Um, it produces a very, very low tone um, because of this fur really darkens up the sound. Traditionally, this instrument is played on its side and uh, actually worn. Um, so you can, it's sort of laid as at an angle as you wear it. Um, for the eases of this gig and, and playing in general, especially recording, I'm just going to go ahead and play it sitting down. I've got my feet under the drum to lift it off of the ground um, to give some good bass sounds. Um, play with a soft mallet. Now, this is actually a very colorful, frizzy mallet. Um, that came with the drum. 
and then also a wooden stick or some sort of hard implement to play the drum. Um, and I, I pretty much give that to my right hand. Um, I'm a right-handed person. A lot of times those patterns can be mm, a little trickier. Um, not sort of time as an assertive fashion. It's not quite like that all the time. Uh, typically, the soft side of the mallet keeps time, laying like a pulse. There's a tune that we're going to talk about um, later, and the rhythm is one and three, four, one and three, four, or some variation of that. And then the high pitch on the rim comes in later to give variety and also either acts as a solo instrument or a clave comp. Um, that way you're playing multiple things and covering multiple instruments in one entity. So with that little bit of a background, um, we're going to talk about some techniques uh, that I've found work. And I'm not it's precisely sure if they are the exact perfect, this is what you use to play these instruments. Because these instruments are totally new to me as of about a year ago. Um, and I've done a little bit of research and, and tried to find out what exactly it takes to play them. And here's what I've come up with. All right, thank you for checking out the uh, Total Percussion blog. I'm going to cut this lesson short because it's getting quite long. Um, and I will post the second half of this lesson as soon as I can. Um, please leave your comments on the uh, Total Percussion blog page or the YouTube page. And um, I, will be, I will be happy to have the feedback and uh, answer any questions that you guys might have. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you later.